A. Shane with GotRom.com. I want to talk about ankle mobility versus hip mobility and which one is more important. So actually, the answer is they're both important, but they are completely different beasts, so I want to kind of explain what I mean by that. So the ankle doesn't have a lot of musculature around it. There's not a lot of tissue. There's your tib tibialis anterior, your peroneals, um, you got your calves, gastroc, soleus, and stuff like that. But there's just not a lot of meat around here. So I find that ankles are a little bit more stubborn and resistant to long-term change. You certainly can make considerable change in your ankle mobility, especially if you've never done any kind of detailed work for the, for the front, for the back, um, for the calcaneus to kind of mobilize the, the joints um, a little bit better in there, different mulligan techniques different soft tissue, stretching, loaded stretching. There's a lot you can do for the ankles, but they are stiff and stubborn more so than the hips because there's a whole lot more meat in and around the hips. Therefore, there's a lot more you can do with tissue work. There's a lot more you can do with stretching and you can get a lot more permanent kind of big flexibility changes in your range of motion in your hips. Um, I recommend you work on both. In my deep squats program, I have certain kind of specialized calf stretches, certain tissue work, certain loaded calf stretches that you can do right before you squat, just so you can feel what it feels like to have um, ankle mobility right before you're doing something like squatting. And a good uh, quick illustration of why you do want to not just neglect and ignore your ankles because they're hard to change, but why you would want to is to squat with your heels elevated. This is why Olympic weightlifters wear an elevated heel. And if you've never tried that, you can try those shoes on. But if you just want a quick example, say you're squatting and say this is your normal squat. It's about, you know, like this. If I just elevate my heels, it's kind of like getting instantaneous free ankle mobility. And you'll notice when you do that, that automatically you can be so much more upright in your squat which is going to make overhead squatting, front squatting, back squatting a lot more comfortable and your Olympic lifting a lot easier. So that's why ankle mobility matters. This is like kind of like instantaneous free ankle mobility. But if you're not genetically gifted with flexible ankles, you're going to have to work on them a little bit. Um, hip mobility, if you're really stuck and you can't get your knees out and uh, you can't sink deeply into your hips, that's where you have the room to make a lot of change. Even if you have bad uh, bone structures, even if you have long femurs, even if you have all kinds of uh, disadvantages, you can make a lot of flexibility changes in your hips. You know, six years ago, I could barely touch my toes. I couldn't squat below parallel. I used to uh, tell my girlfriend at the time that, you know, I'm gonna someday be able to squat like you. And it took me about five years for that to be true but you can make tremendous change in your hips. You can make a medium amount of change in your ankles, but you should work on both. So check out the Deep Squats program, work on both in your squat.